How are you? Huh? How are you? You don't like when I grab your feet this close to the pit, do you? No. Tobe. Get them. Where's the kitties? Go get the kitties. Go get them. Well, it's the uh, first day of working alone, basically. Uh, Eric is on vacation now. He just flew out this morning going to enjoy Florida's tropical weather, I guess. Uh, we've got two trucks on the road hauling right now. I believe it is zero degrees outside. It's supposed to get up to 30 today, so should be a beautiful day for loading trucks. Dad will be doing that. I might have to jump in here and there if he's busy. But I'm going to focus on working on this quad track. All them bogey wheel oils need to be changed. Um, we try to do that every 700 hours or so, especially on the ones that do a lot of high travel. So this one was on the Pro Force, so they rate their when you're supposed to change it, I think at like 1,500 hours. But we were told by KSH, well, that's maybe rated at an average speed of say seven miles an hour. Well, this one land rolls, so it goes 10 miles an hour, 11 miles an hour all day. Um, and then it is also, this fall was on the Pro Force and was 14 miles an hour all day. So that oil gets wore out way quicker than what the book says. So we're gonna change that. There's maybe about 600 hours on it, but it, you can tell it's getting pretty dark. I mean, when we put this in, it's like really nice and green and it, it's black now so it's time to change it. Eric was working on this side last night um, but I still have all the insides to do and that outside. These are all drained and are ready to be put back together and refilled. So like I was uh, explaining about this drain pipe here. It is very handy regardless of how you do this. Normally we've always in the past used tilt cups. This thing works a lot better. It doesn't work in the pit like I explained in the last video just because you don't have nowhere to set it because the wall is there is no floor. So um, right here perfect scenario. Right there this fits really nice under there. Well just the way that it is parked Two out of the three bogey wheels here are sitting with the spoke straight down. Worst case scenario, it gets really sloppy because you can't really catch it. It just kind of runs down and all over. So you got to jam a lot of rags in there to soak up the spillage. But that's just the way it is when you got cups on the other side and everything. You can't move the tractor when you're draining them all. So it just, some of them get sloppy. So now, you just kind of sit and wait. Technically, a guy should own two of these things because you end up waiting a lot. Like I could now move to there and start draining those. By the time I'm done there, I could move this one to the next track, so on and so forth. But I only have one, so it is what it is. So once it gets to the point where these ones pretty much quit leaking, I put tilt cups under the big ones. They seem to drip longer, but this is what I'm talking about with that doggone spoke that's straight down. It just kind of follows that down and makes a bit of a mess. I just keep them fresh rags in there. 
it's really not good to get uh, oil on the tracks and rubber it's actually really not good on them so try to minimize the sloppiness okay I got that all draining now the uh, the fun part they got pluses and minuses I guess of working down here the pluses you know everything's right here and uh, you aren't on your knees the downside is everything is right here where danger is these are big giant snap rings in here and the plier sometimes slips out or kinks sideways and bing, she goes flying and it's not somewhere you really want your face at but it's better than laying on your side on the flat concrete I'm sure there's a lot of people watching that knows exactly what I'm talking about so I'll take the risk level right Toby how are you huh how are you you don't like when I grab your feet this close to the pit, do you? No. Toby. Get them. Where's the kitties? Go get the kitties. Go get them. So basically, this is all cup work down here, like I was saying before. And by cup work, I mean those little, uh, I call them telk cups. They come in telk buckets. Um, so it just becomes, you got to watch because they fill up and uh, you just got to, it's a lot of moving and dumping cups. Right, Toby? You think you want to help? So a lot of people are familiar with these garbage trucks. We've just recently got ourselves a dumpster here. So it, it kind of fasces, fascinates me. Not a, so, hey, easy there, buddy. Don't you bump that in the shop. You got her. You guys are like, you've never seen a dump truck before? No, actually, I have never watched this process. So you're going to watch it with me. He's checking out the northern chill bottle. <laughs> hey, quit going through my garbage. <laughs> I can't believe he actually did that. Ooh. Oh, he spilled them all. Spilled a bunch all over the ground. You gonna pick them up? Interesting. What a machine. He's just leaving. He's not picking up all the stuff that fell on the ground. That's nice. Well, thanks anyways. So, I just got done cleaning for an hour all the caps and O-rings. So that job's done. And I'm short on brake cleaner. I normally shoot brake cleaner in where the snap ring goes, clean that all out. I gotta go on the hunt for some because I got a half a can left. So now it's just the reverse job, putting them on which uh, is pretty simple. I always take the plug out or air gets trapped in there and it becomes a real son of a gun to try to get them the snap ring tap back in. So it works way better to have that plug out and then uh, the air can escape as you pound it in. So let's do it. So you're wondering who's having fun now? Well, it ain't me. Oh, we got turkeys down here. Oh, there goes another one. We're trying to load corn and we've been pulling off the side draws. And now that we got time in the evening or towards evening, we want to uh, take a few loads out of these smaller Sioux grain bins. 
which I'd like to uh, get rid of because foundations are a little beat up. Bends are good, but uh, foundation foundation is shot. So we're gonna light it up. And if you're wondering, it's getting close to it not being freezing freezing cold but this morning it was zero now it's maybe 25 or so we're just gonna warm it up a little bit to get that bottom bearing i don't know why but something must be froze up down there or she's a little stiff or that just don't seem like that's going to be enough but let's go try it no I don't know maybe the problem's up there could it be up there it sure could be up there why wouldn't it be up there now well, let's try burning it up some more you know what that means actually what it meant I've already been up there we've got it I don't know I just took the big old persuader bar sorry for you being way down there I didn't mean to have you looking up at me like that yeah here's the persuader bar I think it's an old buggy axle. Anyway, that's what Grandpa always told me. It's an old buggy axle that they sharpen, sharpen the end off. To me, it looks like some sort of a shaft that come out of something. But he called it the buggy axle, so that's what I'm gonna call it. So we're good to go. And I did not get attacked. Pardon my runny nose. I did not get attacked by any flying turkeys yet. Anyway. I'll back you up and show you the next problem we got on the other auger, unload auger. So the one that we just worked on, that was a top, top drive. So the motor is on the very top of the um, auger, vertical auger. Well, we didn't like that because the sparrows, they always built their nests in there up top and then uh, you turn the belt turned the motor on and the uh, belts flew off because the sparrow nest so we thought well when we heard that they make a bottom on load bottom drive well that's got to be the ticket no more problems up there well now you see what's going on the ice the ice has froze the pulley and the belts into the ice so maybe we'll melt this out if I can get some help, maybe he can chop and I'll melt. You want to chop while I melt? Let's raise the bend. Thank. Raise the bend. Now we're what thinking. In the world? Yeah, that's not good. Maybe they want to see. You want to see? The pulley and the belts are two, three inches deep. Yeah, this winter. Is this is going to be better, though. I was telling them about, this is the buggy axle, right? Maybe that's why we're stranded here in the western side of Minnesota because the buggy axle broke and that's where they said we're stopping. Guess that's why we're here. We figured it out. I'll let you go. Well, I don't even want to tell you how I got it, but it included the air, air compressor, portable air, to blow the water out of the hole because I got sick of trying to dip it out. So the big, the big torch, the LT super blaster heater thinger dinger, ice chisel, dipper, air compressor. Maybe tomorrow will be a better day. Well, I think that's the end of the video, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you in the next one.